do. Okay, so bangers and mash, uh, really, really simple. Two key things with bangers and mash. First, the sausages have to be perfect. I use Ernie McGettigan and Donegal, best sausages in the country, bar none. Uh, and the second thing, if you get your hands on them, a lot of the supermarkets have them, is the mustard seeds. Absolute key, a little bit of vinegar, the mustard seed and onion, just adds that little bit of acidity to the sauce. Uh, and again, as you'll see in the book, my granny Josie, the key to it, cook them nice and slowly, keeps them soft. Lovely little dish, perfect winter warmer. Okay, so first thing, a little bit of oil into a pan, get it on and get it hot, okay? You don't want it overly hot uh, at, at this stage because we're gonna put the sausages on, we're gonna cook them nice and slow and uh, it just keeps, I just find it just keeps the, the, the outer end of them that wee bit softer and it's just nicer, nicer textured finish at the end, okay? So while the pan's heating, I'm just gonna take one medium sized onion and again, I've taken the root completely off, okay? So that natural line that's on the onion, we're just gonna run alongside that, slice them nice and thin because I wanted to caramelize up. Sauce just on. Okay, so once we get a nice little bit of browning on the sausages, okay, we're gonna drop in our onions. And as well as that, just give it a tiny wee mix, get it right into the base of the pan, okay. The onion's gonna add a just a lovely depth of flavor to this, okay? So it's basically the first stage, and uh, as well as the fat and flavor coming off the sausage, the onion's gonna add a wee bit of sweetness to our sauce, okay? So then just some mustard seeds, okay? These are just, you just get these in any of the shops. This is basically what mustard's made from, it's a seed. It's raw, it's hard at this stage, okay? I'm gonna drop them in here, and they'll almost start to pop, and you'll hear them sizzling as well, and popping out of the pan. But you wanna get them in and just get a little bit of dry heat on them. Uh, in the base of the pan, okay? And whenever these, whenever these cook, then they soften, and when you bite in them, it's just that little bit of heat that's uh, a lovely, lovely little aftertaste and just complements the sauce, just lovely, you know? Next then, some more Chester sauce. About two tablespoons. I love the beefiness and the, and the, the depth of flavor that Worcester gives, like any sort of gravy or, or deep sauce, okay? So what I have here then, it's just a little bit of a little bit of uh, a puri puri sauce, or you can use you can use Tabasco, okay? Whatever you have, just a tiny little bit of spicy sauce. It's not overly necessary, but I, I, I personally like a little bit of a little bit of heat heat in the dish, okay? And then about two teaspoons of whole grain mustard, okay? So you can see there's a lovely love between the mustard seeds and the mustard itself. A lovely little bit of heat gun in there again, okay? And now, just some water, just to finish the sauce, okay? So all I have here is just, it's just like a little Bristol chicken granules, okay? Now again, if I was doing this at the restaurant or whatever, I mean, we, we don't do anything like this in the restaurant, but you could be dropping beef stock or veal stock in there, but you know, no one has any of that at home, okay? Or chicken stock or what have you. So just a regular little bit of gravy is absolutely perfectly fine for this, okay? So let that blend in. And then for a little bit of acidic flavor, about three, four tablespoons of uh, balsamic vinegar, okay? And then in with the gravy. Just turn that down to a simmer and just let it work away. Just gonna serve it up and then cut into cut into one, yeah. Okay, so after about after about 10, 10 15 minutes, it's uh, they're ready to go, ready to serve. So just onto a plate, now these are lovely with, whether it be just mash, baked beans, whatever takes your fancy, just serve them like that, 
family style. Beautiful.